Welcome to my CIS 2153 class project on configuring your router using Microsoft Windows by Justin Miller. Network routers are becoming a necessity in homes. Many families have more than one computer and having a router enable multiple computers running Microsoft Windows to be connected to the web simultaneously. Routers can also be a first line of defense against malicious hackers. This defense is exclusively determined on how well the router is configured. There are many different brands of routers. They can be in the form of wired or wireless. The important thing is they all do more or less the same thing. But routers are not the same as hub and switches. They do share some of the common features, but the hubs and switches do not offer the same level of security as routers do. A router actually stores information and can be configured to use with DSL, cable, fiber optic, and other business level lines such as T1, OC3. To configure a router, start by connecting your cable or DSL modem Ethernet cable to the router's WAN or Internet port. Then connect a network cable from the router's LAN port directly to your network interface card on your computer. You now need to find out the router's IP address in order to access the configuration utility. Add a command prompt, type ipconfig, and the default gateway is the router's IP address. Now we can take the default gateway and type it into Windows Internet Explorer. This brings us to our router's login page. This is the first time I'm logging into the router. Of course, I've lost all the documentation that came with it when I first bought it. So I'm going to go to www.routerpasswords.com. Now using their drop down list, I can find the manufacturer of my router. find password and look for the model of my router. Now that I've found the username and password, I'm going to go back to the router login. Now I'm going to type in the password I just found and this particular router has another neat feature for security has CAPTCHA. So I have to type that in in order to log in. Now that we have found how easy it is to find the admin password of your router on the internet, we are going to change it. This password allows you access to the router. Make sure you write your password down because resetting the router back to factory defaults is the only way to overcome a lost password. Now that we have successfully logged into the router, a good first step is giving your wireless network a name. This is called the SSID. You can make this any name you'd like it to be. This is something that distinguishes your network from your neighbor's network. You also have the ability to make this name visible or invisible. Visible mode allows anyone in the wireless range of your router to see your network. Switching this option to invisible heightens your security level. Encrypting the wireless signal is an important step not to be overlooked. WEP and WPA are some of the security modes found in most routers. There is an abundance of WEP hacking programs to be found on the internet that can be used by anyone who wants to be malicious. WPA gives your network ultimate protection. When using WPA, you must choose a password between 8 and 63 alphanumeric characters. You must decide on how you want the router to assign IP addresses to your computers. Enabling the DHCP server assigns IP addresses automatically. Static routing is generally used when a higher level of security is required. It also takes a few extra steps in setting up. 
you will need to manually assign an IP address for each computer under network properties. Reserving an IP address is important when you have a Windows 2003 server on your network or are connecting to other network devices regularly. By adding MAC addresses to your router allows you to reserve the IP address indefinitely. To copy your PC's MAC address makes it easy. DMZ allows a device to sit outside of the protected network. The firewall rules do not apply to this device. DMZ is usually used in testing software or devices that may be hindered by the firewall settings. WAN ping is a useful tool in troubleshooting your network. On the other hand, hackers use WAN ping to search for broadcasting networks. For added security, this should be disabled. Guest Zone is a feature that allows you to broadcast another separate SSID utilizing the same bandwidth but without connectivity to the primary network. Guest Zone does not have sufficient security settings but allow guests to easily connect to the internet through your modem without compromising your data. In just a few easy steps you now have a secure network. Microsoft Windows makes it easy to share resources safely between the computers in your network. Now you can start adding more devices.